So, Emmy, are you working on anything these days? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to do a film about unemployment, about our national jobs crisis. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, Emmy, Emmy, you know, there's some things I'm never going to go see a film about. Uh-huh. Uh, number one, female genital mutilation. Number two, unemployment. You know, number one, unemployment. I couldn't blame him, really. He was only saying what a lot of other people were thinking. So I went to see a PR genius for advice. So what do you think, Mickey? I, I love the idea. I mean it. I love the idea. I was surprised. Uh, very timely. Uh, the only thing, you cannot use this word in the title. You, you cannot use this word. Uh, absolutely not. Unemployment is our new dirty word. In 2010, one little group of 99ers tried to break the deafening national silence of the unemployed. The first meetings were really amazing. You know, they had kind of support group, 12-step, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous overtones. There was a lot of just coming together, saying, look, it's okay. We're in this boat together. Here's what happened to me. I've experienced exactly what you just said. Okay, and that's what's bringing me here. Two and a half years. No, no, no. Three years out of work. Really, I am afraid of losing my skills, losing the confidence level of what I did. For a lot of people, it was a big step just to come out as unemployed. Many people hadn't told their families or their friends because they felt really ashamed. Some people didn't want to be on camera or mentioned by name because they were ashamed or because they were afraid they would be discriminated against by employers. Some people were afraid of being politically active because they felt like that would be a black mark against their name. One of the first steps towards healing ourselves is coming out and saying, look, this is something that I felt ashamed of at times, I felt confused by at times, but it's not going to defeat me. Our first step to it not defeating us is saying something. Coming out, having the strength and the courage to do that. As the 99ers were meeting in a New York City basement, Congress was working hard to screw around with unemployment insurance. There appears to be a confusion on the other side of the aisle between unemployment checks and paychecks. You know, we should not be giving cash to people who, who basically are just going to go blow it on drugs. Senator Hatch actually proposed an amendment to the jobs bill earlier this month to force anyone getting unemployment benefits to submit to a drug test. The 99ers were hoping that Congress would help them, if not by job creation, then by adding more weeks beyond the 99. A so-called Tier 5 of benefits for at least two million people who'd been cut off even though there still wasn't any work. The clock was ticking and they knew it was a long shot. You know, my fear is, is that we're doing all this and are we really going to make a difference where they can say, oh, all right, let's give them, you know what I'm saying, if there's no money, there's no money. I just want to say, just on the money, right, um, no one should be confused, the money's there, right? The Republicans said no to you guys, but they turn around and say that we have to, um, maintain these very expensive tax cuts for very rich people. And we're talking like million and billionaires. So no one should be at all confused. The money's there to pay you retro, right? <laughs> I mean, really, really. Their bus captain isn't here yet. I gave the number of person. 99 bills on the Senate floor, 99 bills on the Senate floor. If one of them should happen to fall, maybe we'd get a job for all. <laughs> Arthur's on. Uh, one of my favorite expressions is when they say that they have no appetite to pass any bills, or they have no appetite to extend unemployment. And I, and I wonder how multi-millionaires like Mitch McConnell, who's worth $34 million, needs an appetite to feed citizens. And it's strange that the same generation of people that were raised in the Depression 
like Orrin Hatch and Mitch McConnell. I mean, Orrin Hatch talks about his own father being penniless in the Depression. And it amazes me that he, would he think his father needed to be drug tested? I can't wait to tell Glenn Beck that I'm going on a bus <laughs> to D.C. The 99ers created their own awareness ribbon. What better colors than black and blue for the beaten up American worker? Who wants to be roaming around the Lincoln Memorial? I'd rather be working.